Good morning, everyone. Welcome once again to our morning worship and prayer. I like to read in Psalm 51, verse 14 to 15. It says, My tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. As we start this morning's devotions, let's sing aloud and declare his praise. In my 
my heart as you reign in all the earth. Reign in my heart as you reign. Let's pray, Lord, that is our heart, that you would capture our hearts and that you would captivate us with your presence. Lord, even this morning, I pray that you'd speak to each one of us as we take this time to listen to your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today, our devotion would focus on Psalm 51. So allow me to read in uh, verses 1 to 12. So medyo mahaba po, so please... Uh, Bear with me on this one. Follow along. In verse 1, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me with wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that ye have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. How many of you have ever experienced a broken heart before? Type there. <laughs> I guess it's all of us. And right now, some of the most popular songs are about uh, broken hearts. Marami tayong mga hugot songs. I've said that because if you look at Psalm 51, you're going to see that Psalm 51 is a song of a broken-hearted man, David. Why? What happened to him? Why was he broken-hearted? The background of this story is a story that we're all familiar with. About two years into David's reign, he committed adultery with Bathsheba. And that was a very serious offense during that time, especially for a king. Just pause there for a moment. And not only did he commit adultery, he murdered a man to cover it up. And this man was one of his most loyal generals. Think about that kind of sin that David committed. The man after God's own heart. And you're probably thinking, he did that? Uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago in our The Gospel Explained series, we, we see Paul struggling between uh, a war, uh, he's struggling about a war between his two selves. And the reality is, all of us face this kind of war. Before you became a Christian, there is a war between our two selves. One self is made in the image of God who wants to do the right thing, but the other is a sinful nature who wants to disobey God. Before we met Christ, it was a battle we can't win. The Bible says we were enslaved. 
Eh, after we meet Christ, that battle or that war doesn't go away. We are still in that war between our two selves, the old sinful nature and our new self. But the goodness is, once we become a Christian, this battle is something that we cannot lose because we now have the power of the Holy Spirit. So that was David. He was battling and unfortunately he lost to his sinful self. Now about a year later, walang consequence to David, he thought he got away and he was clear. Nathan the prophet confronts David of his sin. David realized what he had done and so he was broken hearted and that's when he wrote this psalm. This psalm gives us a poignant picture of the devastating effects of sin. The guilt, the condemnation, the sadness, the depression. But not only that, this psalm also gives us a helpful understanding of sin, repentance, and God's mercy. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. First, a helpful understanding of sin. In verse 2, he says, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. In verse 3, for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. There were two words that David used for sin. First is the word transgression, which literally means intentional rebellion. This gives us a better understanding of the nature of sin. Unfortunately, sin in today's world has been downplayed. Diba, pag nagkasala, oh, it was my failure. That's my weakness. Sometimes they say, it's a mistake or a lapse in judgment. Or sometimes we blame it on our DNA. Uh, we often would hear this uh, phrase when people commit sin. They say, oh, I fell in sin. Pag I fell in sin, parang accident, diba? Parang naglalakad ka, nalaglag ka sa manhole. Oh, I fell in sin. Because in our minds, we're trying to downplay what sin is versus what David said, I sinned, which means I rebelled, I willfully disobeyed, I decided this. And if you think about Adam and Eve, the first sin, the original sin, it was a willful disobedience. It was not Eve walking in the garden and suddenly saw this and like, suddenly... Accidentally, she ate the fruit. <laughs> she probably would go there day after day and day after day and getting enticed and getting tempted. And finally, she said, oh, forget the rules. I'm going to do this. That's the nature of sin. It's intentional rebellion. Another word that David used was iniquity which literally means doing wrong, connecting deserved punishment to its appropriate blame. I mean, think about that definition. I remember when we had our first child, Alex. Uh, she's 20 years old now. So I was a father, first-time father, and I was playing with her. She was two years old, and we were wrestling, and I got a little, uh, a little overly excited. So been a bear hug ko siya. Like, and she would laugh and she would push me and I got uh, again <laughs> a little on the edge I bear hugged her too tightly and she said dad stop and I said no 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 and when she pushed I heard a crack on her wrist and she cried she like shouted in pain and I thought oh my goodness did I just break her wrist? It turned out, we, we went to the doctor, it turned out I dislocated her wrist. And during the time she was in too much pain, I was scared. I was scared of my wife. <laughs> I knew she would kill me. So I asked God for mercy. But wait, para lang yung mga nagagalit sa akin ngayon, I prayed for a miracle and God instantly healed her after the x-ray that she, it was dislocated. When we went home, the pain was gone and it was back to normal. But during the time that she was in pain, in my mind, uh, Doc, break my arm instead. Pagalihin mo na siya, ako na lang. Why? Because for all of us, there's this deep law at work. We all know inside our hearts that all sin is like a debt that must be paid for. I knew I, made a, I, I did something wrong. I need to suffer the consequence. And this results in what we call guilt. 
iba pagka mayroong mga movies where there's a victim of injustice, the victim's family, when the criminal would get a guilty sentence, they would say, it won't bring our child back, but it's good to know that he will pay for what he did. Or maybe when you hurt someone you love, usually what you say was, what can I do to make it up to you? Because you know there should be a matching consequence to your sin. So if that's the nature of sin, usually there are two responses that we have because of that guilt. First is we downplay sin, as I've said, or we accept sin. Everybody's doing this. This is normal. Or at times, at worst, we even celebrate it. This is nothing wrong. In fact, we should be doing this. That's to say, I don't have a debt or I don't have to pay for my debt. Walang utang. Wala akong kailangan bayaran. But on the other hand, if the guilt is too strong, uh, another response is, I need to pay for my debt, which means penance. Alam ko, we, we live in a, in, a, in a nation where penance is real. But then, you become a Christian, you thought you've been set free of penance mentality. Pero, I mean, pansinin natin, pagka nagkasala tayo, iniisip natin, I'll read the Bible more. From this day on, cover to cover na ako. I'll pray 23 hours a day. I will serve more. Ako yung usher, ako yung preacher, ako yung worship leader, or I will give more. I will disciple more. I will witness more. When we do that in response to sin, then that is what you call penance, which is not the right response to sin, which leads us to the second point, understanding of repentance. Because this is how David responded. In verse 4, he said, Against you, you only have I, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. In uh, a couple of verses uh, after that, in verse 16, he said, You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. You don't want penance. In other words, you don't want me to pay it off with sacrifice. And then he said this, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart of God you will not despise. For David, the right response to iniquity and transgression is not penance but repentance. He described repentance as a broken and contrite heart. Uh, another word for contrite is crushed heart. Wow! Durug na puso. Yun daw yung repentance. So David was a broken-hearted man because of his sin. Now let's talk about brokenness and sorrow for a moment. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 to 11, in the NIV, let me read that to you. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you. What earnestness, what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what alarm, what longing, what concern, what readiness to see justice done. At every point, you have proved yourselves to be innocent in this matter. This verse talks about two kinds of sorrow. One is worldly sorrow. That's not repentance. Worldly sorrow happens when you say, oh, I'm really sorry because I hurt myself. Because I am hurting. Because I'm suffering the consequence. You know what that is? That's not repentance. That's regret. Kung nagsisisi ka lang kasi may consequence na, nasas, na, na nagsasuffer ka from. Uh, another, th another example of worldly sorrow is I'm sorry because I've hurt you or I've hurt others. That is remorse. And as good as that is, that is not repentance. Because that will not bring a true and lasting change. Only repentance would. Repentance is not regret. Repentance is not remorse. Godly sorrow, Paul talked about, and David exemplified, is saying this, I'm sorry, not because I've hurt myself, not because I've hurt others. I'm sorry because I hurt God. David said, only you have I sinned. And when you have that kind of godly sorrow, it produces earnestness, an eagerness, an indignation, an alarm, a longing, a concern, and a readiness to change. 
in the Corinthian letter, it was Paul who pointed out the sin of the Corinthians. And they were hurt by his letter. But Paul said, if I'm going to paraphrase what he was trying to say there, he was trying to say, I'm happy to hurt you if that godly sorrow would bring you to repentance. And I, I'm pretty sure Nathan was happy to hurt David because it brought a brokenness and a crushed heart that led to repentance. And lastly, understanding of God's mercy. In verse 1, he started with the mercy of God. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Now, mercy can only be appreciated when we, when we talk about justice. What is justice? Justice is when you get what you deserve. Today, in... Our society, there's a lot of outcry for justice all over the world. And rightly so, because we all know God is a God of justice. Now imagine if David cried out to, to God for justice, Lord, oh God, justice. What would have he gotten from God if he cried out for justice? Death. <laughs> Sabi ni Lord, oh, gusto mo what you deserve? You need to die. Now, how many of you want to know what we deserve if we ask God for justice right now in the world kasi ngayon madali mag call out kailangan may justice siyang maserve kailangan may justice siyang maserve but if God's gonna apply justice to everyone what do you think do you deserve here's what it says in Romans 6 23 for the wages of sin is death if justice is applied to all on earth we will have eternal death, which means hell. How many of you now don't want justice applied on earth? <laughs> I'm not saying there should not be justice in certain things. God is the one who will administer justice. Justice is God's responsibility, not ours. Mercy is what he cried out for. What is mercy? It is when you don't get what you deserve. How many of you here have ever asked for mercy? Maybe from your parents. Maybe from your spouse. Or your teacher, your boss. Maybe you've asked for mercy from MMDA. Boss, sige na. Sometimes you receive mercy. Sometimes you don't receive mercy. If you don't receive mercy, nagagalit ka ba? No. You accept it because you deserve it. But once you receive mercy... How do you respond? Alang, wow, thank you, salamat. Now question, what if every time you commit a sin or every time you do something dumb or foolish or a mistake, what if every time you ask for mercy, you will be granted mercy? How many of you like that? Parang too good to be true, right? Now I have this illustration for you. The Lakers would be the champions in this season's NBA in Jesus' name. And all the Lakers fan type, Amen. Okay, the Lakers' first five, if you imagine, it's a strong first five. Now, think about who will win if this is the Lakers' first five against the EN Philippines' first five. Bishop Manny, Bishop Ferdy, Pastor Nixon, Pastor June, Pastor Michael. Who do you think will win? Of course, every time it's ENPH now. <laughs> of course, walang laban yung ENPH. It's always the Lakers. No contest. Now, if you think about your transgression and your iniquity, my transgression and my iniquity, and if you let that compete with God's steadfast love and abundant mercy, which was what David was trying to cry out for, in your steadfast love and your abundant mercy, who do you think will win? Some of you probably would say, well, depends on how big my sin is and my iniquity. No, no matter how big your sin is, there is no sin that is too great to be beyond the mercy of God. All the time, the steadfast love of God and the abundant mercy of God would always win. His mercy would blot out the stain. That's what David prayed for. A stain is a reminder of what happened in the past. Pag may mancha yung t-shirt mo, lagi mong naaalala, ah, ito yung kumain ako, nalaglag dito. 
the stain will never ever remind you. Uh, when God blots away, out the stain, He is taking away the memory of the past. God's mercy would also wash away our guilt. It's gone forever. How many of you are glad God doesn't treat us according to what we deserve, but it's according to His steadfast love and His abundant mercy? As I end, let me tell you God's ultimate act of mercy. He became man in Christ Jesus. He lived the life that we should have lived. He died the death that we should have died in our place. Three days later, He rose from the dead, proving that He is the Son of God and offering the gift of salvation to all. Whether your sins are big or your transgressions are too great, He is offering salvation to you as you repent and believe in Him. And if you want to receive the fullness of His mercy, let me invite you, if you've never done this before, accept Jesus in your heart. Put your faith in Him for your salvation. And let's end with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you that no matter how great our sins are, they are no match for your abundant mercy. No matter how big our transgressions are, they are no match for your steadfast love. Lord, today we come to you. Kahit sino ka pa, wherever you are, whatever you've done, you can come to Jesus today. Ask Him for His mercy. He can blot out your sin and He can wash away your guilt. Lord, do that for those of us who need it. Blot out our sin and wash away our guilt. And for those who are praying for your ultimate mercy, Lord, I pray that you would come into their hearts, be their Lord, and be their Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship God one more time. No more running, I will remain in you. No more striving, I surrender to your love. As we end, let me bless you in Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day and a great week, everyone.